The title of our project is Increasing Motivation in Science Using Orbital Studies. We are grade 6 teachers at Vichy Cove Elementary, teaching both English and early French immersion students. Our school and community provides rich and meaningful learning experiences for a diverse student population. My name is Bernice Curtis and I teach grade 6 early French immersion. There are 13 girls and 8 boys who are eager to learn and are keen problem solvers. My name is Roxanne Roberts and I teach grade 6 English. There are 11 boys and 3 girls who sometimes require a little extra assistance but always work hard and meet their specific goals. We believe that students learn best when they are motivated, have choice in their learning, are appropriately challenged and given an opportunity to share their skills. STEM gave us the chance to take these beliefs and truly tie them together to give students the ultimate learning experience in science. There has been a steadily growing amount of research connecting student motivation with student achievement. If students are motivated for varying reasons, student achievement increases. Thus, if we can increase student motivation, learning will increase. This became the framework for our initial student research question. How will the use of orbital studies affect student motivation and achievement? Knowing this connection between student motivation and learning, our research question evolved to be focused specifically on student motivation and ways in which we can increase student motivation. Therefore, our research question asked, how will the use of orbital studies increase student motivation in the grade six science classroom? Our first challenge was to understand the term orbital studies. Using a variety of web-based articles, journal articles, and books, we came to understand orbital studies as independent investigations that orbit or revolve around some facet of the curriculum. Students select their topics, work with guidance and coaching from the teacher to develop more expertise both on the topic and on the process of becoming an independent investigator. Carol Ann Tomlinson has completed much research on the differentiated classroom and state that orbital studies allow differentiation on content because students can select their own topics and research materials. Also on process because students develop their own study and research plans and products because students can select from a wide range of options about how to express their learning. Since the content, process, and product are differentiated by student choice rather than by teacher choice, this will lead to a much higher level of engagement. We are confident that orbital studies will increase student motivation, but what impact will these studies have on us teachers and our learning? This became our second research question. Will orbital studies change or help inform our teaching practices? To begin our project, it was important for parents to be properly informed and reassured that student data was confidential. To ensure confidentiality, students were assigned numbers which they used on any written work throughout the entire project. Permission was obtained from parents or guardians through consent forms with the option to drop out of the project at any time. The planning of this project enabled us to create strong working relationships with the Teachers in Action team and Let's Talk Science through a series of emails, phone calls and consultations. Let's Talk Science made a significant contribution to our project and is a great resource for any teacher who may be less comfortable teaching science or just need a fresh approach to the curriculum. They come with expertise, enthusiasm, and plenty of new ideas for sharing. Before any discussion about STEM, students were asked to complete a quick pre-survey about science. This same survey was completed after STEM had finished. This survey allowed us to compare science attitudes pre and post STEM. We began the implementation process in January when Let's Talk Science came into our classrooms with stations in hopes of generating some excitement in students. There were a total of four stations and each station contained activities and information on one of the grade six curriculum units, space, electricity, light and life. Students rotated through the stations participating in the learning activities prepared by Let's Talk Science. As students rotated through the stations they carried with them a form to write I wonder statements. 
The I wonder statements are those questions that we ask ourselves and are often triggered by something we are currently learning or investigating. These statements would then be used to help narrow their research question for their orbital study. By the end of the day, all students were able to independently narrow down a focus area and most ed created a research question. When research questions were finalized, they were forwarded to Let's Talk Science. The Let's Talk Science team then did some background preparation for their one-on-one -on -one consultations with the students and us teachers. During the month of February, each student met with a Let's Talk Science volunteer expert to discuss their topic and look at different ways to further research their topic and develop an experiment or demonstration for the class. These consultations were invaluable not only for the students but for us teachers since we were present during the consultation sessions. After each student met with a Let's Talk Science volunteer, the research and lesson plan preparation began. We spent many hours using books and the internet to gather information on the topic and eventually answered their research question. Students became experts themselves on their topic. Yeah. Okay, so how are you going to make your lander land? What are you doing? We're, we're going to put legs on it so like when um, it lands, it'll hold itself up and, and then it'll keep flopping yeah, yeah. like you were standing on the Evolution and natural selection, like Charles Darwin's theory, and doing a game for for the project. So what we're doing is we're cutting the solar panels off of the batteries, and then ready and armed with new confidence and expertise on their topics, students were eager to begin teaching the class. A typical lesson had the student teacher passing out their one-page handout. The handout was discussed and any questions answered. Many students showed videos to help in their lesson, played games, others drew diagrams, some even had guest speakers. Students then proceeded with an experiment or demonstration to further the class's understanding. After the activity was completed, each student responded to a five-question multiple-choice quiz and a peer assessment. The student teacher also completed a self-assessment on how they thought the lesson went. We also took observation notes, photographs, and video which we used in our assessment. Much of this was relayed in daily reflections using Evernote. Um, for my project, she, she plays Pastor Hay. She played a model to play Pastor Hay. Our project looked at all areas of the grade 6 science curriculum. We learned a significant amount of information from two major sources, Let's Talk Science volunteers and the students themselves. As students met with Let's Talk Science to work on research, we also joined in on the conferencing and became part of the discussion and learning. We asked questions and we even found ourselves making I wonder statements. During STEM, we learned to rely more on observation as a main form of assessment. Using Evernote, we set up student folders where we kept observation notes and photos taken during the project. This made writing reflections simple since we were able to copy and paste much of our observations into a new note. 
As teachers, we often hover over students to make sure they follow procedures a certain way, complete all steps, keep things neat and tidy. However, we learned that teaching isn't all about teacher teaching and student listening. Students have a lot of knowledge and we sometimes underestimate what they know and how effective they are at showing others. We have learned to let students investigate independently, get dirty, make mistakes, and figure out ways to improve. <laughs> Do we have oh, anything left? Oh, look, I'm keeping it. Just one. Barely took any damage at all. That one died. 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 How much do you enjoy science outside school? How much do you enjoy science in the classroom? How would you describe your knowledge of science? How would you describe your comfort level of science? When you see science on your daily schedule, how excited do you feel? When examining our results of doing scale questions on the pre and post survey, our findings indicate that the post survey questions all show a positive increase. Our results suggest that in student enjoyment, comfort, and motivation in science have all increased throughout STEM. The pre and post survey also includes two open-ended questions whereby the students were able to reflect on their scientific experiences. The two questions were, explain why you like science or why you do not like science. What would you change to make science class more interesting? Explain. Prior to STEM, students stated that they like science generally because they get a chance to do experiments and work in a group. However, students would like to see more hands-on learning and more enjoyable activities like outside activities. Students indicated that science is less enjoyable in environments where they have to sit back and hear lectures, take notes, and then get tested on the material. They indicated that they would like to change science and make it more interesting, including those experiments where they can pose questions and find the answers themselves. Students enjoyed many components of the STEM project. It wasn't just the end product that students found interesting. It was the whole learning process. Researching the topic, planning the experiment, teaching the class, and listening to their classmates were all highlights of this experience. Students did, however, indicate that if they were to do it all over again, they would create a different research question that was more interesting and different from what other people were doing. We discovered several common patterns and recurring themes. First, the use of orbital studies is effective in increasing student motivation. All students indicated that their participation in STEM was a positive one and many used words like loved it, lots of fun, excited, favorite part of grade 6. There was one student after he had completed his project asked if he could do another project. I said that it would take a lot of time and a lot of work. He then said, yeah, but it was worth it. Secondly, the use of orbital studies improved confidence and independence in students. A student stated in his reflection, I feel more comfortable with science and a bit smarter. Giving students the responsibility to develop a research question and follow it through delays a message of trust. Students then take that message along with determination to meet a goal. As success is met, confidence grows along with independence. Positive feedback is received from our peers reaffirms the value of our hard work. This is also supported in the pre and post survey questions where students indicated the perceived knowledge level of science. Finally, orbital studies challenge students to become reflective, critical thinkers. In science and life generally, we are faced with problems or situations that will require us to think outside the box, try something different, be willing to make several attempts, and to not give up. Some people will tackle those problems and situations without hesitation, while others need a push. STEM force students to take risks and not give up to think of the possibilities, weigh the options, and find solutions. What seemed impossible at times eventually became a mere bump in the road at the end. Not a single student gave up.
As STEM progressed, we became more willing to give students opportunities to explore and investigate with minimal assistance and restrictions, giving them more independence. This change in attitude and teaching practices will have a long-term impact on our classroom practice. Our goal is to carry these practices into future years and across other subjects. With this in mind, we will need to achieve this goal with our limited classroom resources and time restraints. We also need to continue building efficient and effective methods to assess each student's academic achievement of the specific curriculum outcome. However, given the positive feedback of all our students, this is something that we would like to continue in the future with our new learners. STEM has really taught me a lot and it gets to teach me stuff that I haven't known like, and that I want to know and that it's stuff that I like and I actually want to learn. Hi. Um, well, I'm doing STEM because, well, it's really fun and interesting to make, to be able to teach the whole class and to be able to make your own, like, projects. And, and why do you like doing the STEM project? It's awesome. Student learning and academic achievement has been a major focus of teaching. It is the responsibility of the teacher to ensure this occurs. How we approach this task is what we think of as the initial steps of teacher input. As teachers, we are constantly reflecting on our teaching practices. What works best? What do I need to change? How can I make this more interesting? With teacher inquiry, we find ourselves in unknown situations that force us as teachers to explore, try out new things, change the environment all in hopes of improving our skills along with those of the students. We realized that we didn't need to have all the answers for the students. By giving the students a chance to ask open-ended questions, we became a bigger part of the inquiry process and understood more about the inquisitive nature of meaningful science. By learning about the inquiry process, as a teacher, we are able to engage the students keep them motivated, and encourage their exploration in science topics of their choice. In our future science lessons, we plan to take a more inquiry-based approach in our own teaching and learning for all of our students. This project was very successful in increasing student motivation and teacher engagement. STEM was a huge success for both our students' learning and for our own professional development as teachers. Throughout this learning process, we were able to critically reflect on our own teaching practices and engage in collaboration for our future classes. Just as our students indicated that STEM was meaningful because they were learning by doing, we teachers agree. STEM as professional development was an excellent experience as we were able to pose questions about teaching, experiment using the support of the STEM team and our administration, and personally reflect on our results. Furthermore, sharing and consulting with other professionals throughout this entire process enhanced our learning. We would like to thank the Teachers and Action Team for all of their dedication and support to our professional learning this year. Let's Talk Science was an asset to both our students and ourselves in this process. A huge thank you to our administration team at Beaches Hope Elementary for standing behind our project and allowing us to share our experience with our fellow colleagues. We would like to acknowledge the continuous support from our parents and guardians. Finally, we would like to express sincere gratitude to our grade 6 learners. Their curiosity and their eagerness to learn truly motivate us teachers to enjoy this endeavor. Thank you. Mass people.